Joining us now is Nathaniel Mulcahy, who is the founder and uh, director of World Stove. And Nathaniel, um, your involvement with, uh, with, with all things Gloucester we'll get to in a minute. But show us a little bit about what World Stove is, what it does, and, uh, and your plan for the future with this. Sure. Um, I mean, World Stove started 11 years ago. Uh, it's primarily a humanitarian and environmental company. We are a for-profit company, not a non-profit, which means as a social enterprise, we're allowed to make a profit, but a significant portion of that profit goes reinvested back into the company or into humanitarian or environmental projects. Okay, and what is it that you actually do? What, what is the product? Uh, the, the, there are several products, and, and thank you for asking, because that helps clear up a little bit of confusion. Some people have been wondering, well, stoves, how does that fit in with marine industry? And then and, and I can get to that, but um, World Stove, this is, this is a stove. Mm -hmm. we've, made, we've made these now... Um, all over the world, really. Um, it's a simple stove. If you think about it, right now people spend between two and, and Darfur is a great example, two and three dollars a day for wood to cook with and five cents a day for food. So there's, there's just something really wrong with mm -hmm. the picture there. Mm -hmm. um, by having this, not only do you have a stove which allows you to use free fuel, but you reduce the emissions. And right now, the amount of deaths caused per year due to open fire cooking. Uh, emissions exceed the total number of deaths from breast cancer and AIDS combined. Good heavens. So, I mean, we're looking at 1.9 million deaths a year. And, and, and it's, there are no little lapel ribbons telling about that. So that's what we're fighting. In trying to make the stove that produced the lowest possible emissions and used the smallest amount of fuel, we came up with something which had a byproduct. And that's how we became a marine industry. This is the byproduct in, in the luxurious marshmallow <laughs> yeah. fluff jar. The demo can, yep. Yep. Um, this is called biochar. Mm -hmm. um, it's 80% pure carbon. So if you, depending on what side of the climate fence you're on, mm -hmm. you, you multiply by 0 0.8, multiply by 3.67, and that same amount of CO2, this is sequestering. Um, but it has a, another big advantage. Right now, everybody hears about the famine in Africa. And the famine in Africa is not because there isn't food, it's because people can't grow food. And the reason they can't grow food is there's no water. So this is part of a presentation that we made for the Gates Foundation a few years ago about how you can use our product to combat desertification. These are three... Oh, oh just kicked the can there. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> These are three tomato plants growing in pure sand with our product. This is with 0% product. This is with 15% per volume of product, and this is 30% per volume per product. And what's really significant here is this is three weeks with no water in full sunlight. So on the right-hand side, how much uh, byproduct now did you put in that? 50%? This one here? That's 30% yep. per, vo per volume, which means, and you don't have to fill a whole field. You just need a little ball around the roots of the plant. So that means less water, significantly less water. Wow. Now, by combining that with fish effluents, we help reverse desertification. Right now, deserts are growing throughout the world. I mean, northern Haiti uh, is officially now a desert. Uh, deserts of Africa, deserts in China are expanding at a rate of millions of hectares per year. So that's millions of hectares of arable land that could produce food, which are no longer producing food. By combining this with fish effluents, we are able to restore so soils and so reverse the trends of desertification and allow people to grow their own food and take care of their own lives rather than wait for the aid community to come through to them. All right, Nathaniel, uh, how do we locate uh, World Stove? What's the best way to get more information? Worldstove.com or you can go to YouTube and look for username World Stove and huh. there's plenty of stuff there. All right, thank you very much. Nathaniel Mulcahy is the World Stove founder and director. With more stuff online, I'm Rick Moore.